Oh! Oh! Jelly. What more can you say but jelly? Everybody loves jelly. Well, most people like jelly. I'm not going to make grandma's jelly. That's for sure. I'm going to make what I call my triple X jelly, which is a uh, blackberry, habanero peppers, and rum. And <laughs> it's so good. Got a nice little bite to it. And uh, it's not necessarily for your peanut butter and jelly. I'll eventually show you some other recipes that I use it for, but you can use it for basting uh, chicken, pork, fish. Uh, it's really good for all of those. I have some special, special recipes that I'll show you how you can use it. And uh, we're kind of going to go through the canning process again, like grandma used to do, but it works across the board. You make barbecue sauces and you want to package them up, give them out to your friends because you think you got a really good barbecue sauce, you can use this canning method also for barbecue sauce. That way it's sealed and it's got a good shelf life. So let's make us some triple X jelly. Primary tool when you're wanting to can stuff is to have yourself a canning pot. If you don't have one, you can probably ask grandma. Grandma might have one. Grandma's always canned stuff. Ask your mom, she might have one. Neighbor might have one that they'd let you borrow. They're not too expensive, so if you want to do a lot of canning, say you're gonna can jelly, say you enjoy doing the jellies. Say you're gonna can tomatoes from the garden. We can a lot of tomatoes. Um, it, it makes it great for when you wanna do spaghetti sauces. I think we still have four jars of canned tomatoes left from last year. Canned carrots, canned peas, canned corn, canned pickles, canned, I don't know what else you can can. Well, if you do barbecue sauce, if you want to do mass amounts of barbecue sauce, it's well worth the investment to get one of these. The main reason is because you want to do a hot water bath at the end of the process and that's what seals your jars and extends your shelf life. The main thing is keeping the jars off of the bottom of the pot so that it allows circulation of the boiling water all around the whole thing. You want to fill it up an inch above the jar itself. But these have these handy dandy little rack it's your jar rack that sets on the top like that. When you're ready to do the canning, you got your water boiling, you set the rack down in there like that, put the lid on, it's good to go. There are other routes you can take if you don't want to get this whole setup. Get yourself a deep stock pot, again, you want to make sure that there is enough room to have at least an inch of water over your jars. You want them fully submerged. So if you get a stock pot or I think a lobster pot might work because they have the base that goes down to them with the holes in it so the water can still come up. But the least expensive way to go is get yourself a stock pot and Hold again. You can get yourself a bunch of the, uh, uh, they're not the lids, they're the rings for the lids that go on your jars. You have to buy a thing of jars. Comes in about a 12 pack usually. Those aren't expensive, but you'll have plenty of extra rings too because typically you're doing about six jars per batch of jelly and you can set those down in. I'll show you after I do this. You can set those down in the bottom to keep your jars elevated off of the base of the pot. 
So it would look like this when you have them down in the bottom. And then you can set your jars around and keep them elevated off the base. You're not gonna be able to fit as many as you would if you had a canning pot, but hey, this works. Another thought would be to get, sorry for the noise. Another thought would be to get like maybe an aluminum pie tray, something cheap and cut holes in it. So that can set upside down in the bottom of, of a stock pot. There you go. So figure out how you want to do a canning pot and do it. You guys are smart. You can figure something out if you can't get a canning pot. For our jelly, got a few ingredients. Got your habaneros. We're gonna chop those up really fine. I'm probably gonna use my little mini food processor that you've seen before, or you can do it by hand. Got about a third of a cup of lemon juice. Don't worry, it's not gonna affect the flavor. You have to have the acidity when you are doing a pepper jelly. Um, I know I've told you before, I'm not a chemist. I'm not a trained cook in any manner. I have basically screwed around a lot in the kitchen and figured out different things to do. But the one thing I do have is an International Food Safety Manager certification, which that teaches you about food poisoning and uh, things you have to do in order to make sure you have a sterile, healthy environment. In that, botulism is a key component to food safety. And when you make a pepper jelly, botulism is a possibility if you don't have the right level of acidity. So you need either an apple cider vinegar which could replace the lemon juice or lemon juice. I just chose to use lemon juice today. So I have a third a cup of lemon juice. I have four cups of blackberry juice. I just bought juice today. My wife goes through a lot of the process of taking the fresh fruits and making the juice. I do that mainly when I have mangoes and I do my mango habanero. Um, but with the blackberry juice, it takes a lot of blackberries. Blackberries aren't cheap. You can buy a bottle of blackberry juice for $3.99 and it'll probably make you two batches of the jelly. You'd spend probably 15 bucks in blackberries in order to get it. So, and I'm not out running through the woods picking blackberries and then coming home and squishing them and making my jelly. If you want to make a jam, if you don't know the difference between jelly and jam, look it up. Google it. We're not going there. I'm making a blackberry jelly. So, we have our habaneros. We have our lemon juice. We have our blackberry jelly. Ha! <laughs> I caught myself this time. I often screw up when I'm making these videos, and I have to go back and I have to add some text in when I'm editing saying, Oh, no! It's not a zucchini squash, that's a spaghetti squash. Anyway, I caught myself. I have blackberry juice, not blackberry jelly yet. Blackberry juice. Four cups of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. You can use a liquid pectin or you can use a powdered pectin. I am using a powdered pectin and I got a cat hair or something right there. I'm using the powdered pectin today. I'm using two ounces of powdered pectin. Stars of the show. I got the captain, a little bit of the captain, and I'm going to mix it with some Myers. So I'm going to do probably uh, an eighth of cup of each. Not probably. I have a habit of saying that too. I'm going to use an eighth of a cup of Myers dark rum and I'm going to use an eighth of a cup of Captain Morgan's. It's gonna make it special. 
and you need your fresh jars. Our first step is to sterilize these things. So I'll show you how to do that right now. In your pot where you are going to be doing the hot bath, have your jars set all the way down, completely submerged, right side up, with at least an inch of water over the top, and we're gonna bring that to a boil. This is sterilizing your jars. At the same time, right next door, we got the lids and the screw tops in a pan of water also boiling. Gonna let those come to a boil and then we will remove them from the heat and just let them sit in the water. Back over with these guys, once we get to a boil, we're gonna let them sit in there for 10 minutes. Then over next door to all of that, we have our paper towels where we will turn them upside down and allow them to dry. That's how you sterilize your jars. So while our jars and lids are sterilizing, I'm gonna go ahead and get my habaneros all chopped up and ready to go. Don't forget to wash your hands before you pee, rub your eyes, Pick your nose, scratch your butt, any of that. Those little guys will make it an unpleasant experience. Okay, we got the jars and lids all sterilized. So it's time to make some jelly. Come on, I'll show you how to do this. So take about a half a cup, just some of your sugar, set it aside. No more than half a cup, because we're gonna mix that with our pectin, and we will add it later. That should be enough. And pour your pectin into there. We'll stir that up while we have everything else boiling, and we'll add it at the end.
So that's it for the jarring process. Let it boil for about 10 minutes and uh, now I'm just gonna let them sit here. We're gonna wait to hear that little pop. And that's a good noise because you know that it's sealed at that point. Then it'll take probably about 24 hours to set it up. That was a little excess jar that didn't have to go in the water bath. Just stuck it in the refrigerator. It's already good to go. Look at that. Look at the color on that. That's just beautiful. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh. That's good. You can taste the blackberry. You can taste the rum. And it's got a bite. Get some cream cheese. And big chunk of cream cheese. Pour some of this over the top of it and serve it with some chips, crackers. People will love it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys give it a try. Be sure to subscribe to the Eat This Grinds and Cocktails channel. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with everybody you know, and I will have some recipes that utilize the triple X jelly coming around soon. So make sure you have some on hand, and that way you can do those recipes also without the extra work in that day. Okay, have a good evening. See ya.